the Wendigo, a terrifying monster from Native American mythology that represented the darkest potential of the human spirit in the most gruesome of manners. Famine and gluttony incarnate, this mythical creature remains as haunting today as it ever was. But what made the Wendigo so feared? Let's find out together right now. The Wendigo was a demonic spirit with origins in Algonquian folklore, primarily stemming from the East Coast forests of Canada and several areas of the United States. Clearly identified as a malevolent spirit, the Wendigo's defining characteristic is centred around cannibalism, both the desire to consume human flesh itself as well as to inspire this desire in others, invoking feelings of insatiable greed and hunger. Commonly associated with winter, it was said to possess power over snowstorms and freezing temperatures. An angry Wendigo was known to cause the sky to darken and even to summon extreme weather such as tornadoes or blizzards. The Wendigo is typically presented with a humanoid form, although with exaggerated features, long limbs and extremely thin due to its relentless hunger, with no hair or occasionally snow white hair matted with blood withered and bony hands with razor-sharp claws that could tear through a person with little effort. Some legends even suggest the claws were made of ice, connecting again with the winter theme. The mouth of a Wendigo is filled with equally sharp, needle-like teeth that are stained a terrible shade of yellow. It is even claimed that a Wendigo will sometimes have no lips, having consumed them out of desperate starvation. The Wendigo possessed large eyes, much larger than an average human, that would glow red or yellow. In some alternative descriptions, the Wendigo has the head of a deer. This monster had the power to bring famine and harsh winter storms across the land, creating the perfect hunting grounds upon which to prey, filled with plentiful victims that had been forced to venture throughout the forests in search of their own survival, desperate and weak. One of the most terrifying aspects of a Wendigo is its inability to be satisfied. A Wendigo is always hungry and can never be filled. It takes pleasure in the hunt for prey and the act of killing, but even after devouring the entirety of a human being, its hunger is not quenched. A Wendigo grows with every meal it eats in proportion to the mass it has devoured. Because of this, a Wendigo can never be satisfied and will always hunger for more victims. The Wendigo is classified as a demon, but some can be created from humans who have been corrupted by the power of the Wendigo, becoming themselves unable to ever satiate their hunger. Whilst the Wendigo is able to exist in the physical world, it is actually a spirit and as such has the power to become invisible, fly or even possess humans. The Wendigo is extremely selective with those it chooses to possess. Most often, the creature will only possess people who are starving, who are gluttonous, who have had a craving for human flesh before, or who are greedy and have tendencies to display their wealth openly. This characteristic suggests that one possible underlying purpose of the myth was to dissuade these characteristics in people. The Wendigo is a ruthless and savage predator. It has heightened senses that allow it to tune into every inch of its hunting grounds. Its sense of sight, smell and hearing are so impressive that it is able to track its prey and know the exact movements of its target even if it is many miles away. Although the Wendigo is always seeking to fill a deep hunger, it enjoys taking its time before a kill. It will often stalk its prey for hours on end and will reveal its presence in small ways every so often in order to make its prey fearful. A person who is being stalked by a Wendigo will often feel a growing sense of dread that they are being watched or followed. The Wendigo is able to sense their fear and paranoia growing with each heartbeat. This brings the malevolent spirit a sense of excitement and anticipation for the kill. It is said that the final warning a Wendigo will give before striking is to unleash a blood-curdling howl in the harsh winter winds. The warning does little to help victims. By the time they hear it, it is already too late. Wendigos are particularly intelligent demons, which, when combined with their hypersensitive hunting capabilities, means that once your scent has been caught, your fate is sealed. Hiding from a Wendigo is almost impossible, even inside a building. Many stories exist of Wendigos breaking into homes, slaughtering all within, and even converting the location into a lair for hibernation until the inevitable hunger wakes it again. But all hope is not lost. Despite the seemingly irrepressible power of this deadly demon, 
there are several things that can help you in the event you find yourself lost in the Canadian forests anytime soon. Given their affinity with winter and ice, fire is a particularly effective tool to warn off a Wendigo. Further to this, possession of a magical amulet or charm will provide some protection as a direct opposition to the demonic nature of the beast. Finally, an old faithful silver weapon is the most effective counter to this terrifying monster. It is said only a silver weapon can seriously harm a Wendigo. If however, by some chance, you are able to kill the creature with a silver weapon by driving one through its icy heart, do not celebrate and think the task is complete. You will need to immediately place the shards of the heart in a silver box and burn it in consecrated ground. Next, dismember the body with your silver weapon and cremate it. Finally, the ashes must be scattered to the four winds. If you fail to follow this procedure, the Wendigo will resurrect and come in search of bloody vengeance. Don't say you haven't been warned. The myth of the Wendigo has even made its way into the medical world, with a condition named Wendigo Psychosis describing people who crave human flesh. A haunting mythical creature then. But what is the possible context behind the story? As is common with many mythical monsters, it is a tale often seen as a warning against corruption, used as a means of controlling behaviour in local populations. Given the theme of extreme winter that is associated with the creature, it is often hypothesised that the story acted as a counter to the taboo act of eating human flesh. If you genuinely were stranded in the wilderness and starving, it also helped to dehumanise people that did engage in the act of cannibalism, making it easier for everyone else to rationalise in their minds how a person could take that road. One thing is for sure, the next time you plan a pleasant winter stroll through the woodlands of Canada, make sure you take a lighter and a silver blade with you. You know, just in case. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more great stories. Cheers.